Hi and welcome to part two of the Seiko NH35 showing the reassembly of the movement. So we start with the movement side as you can see here and I'm oiling the center jewel hole and uh, I'll note at this point I don't actually have or use any Seiko lubricants. I, I just use uh, Mobius oils um, specifically or largely 9010 D5 and grease once the center wheel is fitted the center wheel bridge is fitted in place and screwed into place Following this, the barrel, third wheel, escape wheel, and then the fourth wheel after lubricating the pivot, or the stem rather. At this point, I realized that I had not reinstalled the keyless works which ideally should be done first and ordinarily had this been a rebuild of the movement for somebody else I would have stripped and cleaned that again to uh, to get rid of the oils I'd applied and then I would have rebuilt it starting with the keyless works first because this movement was just mine and I was filming it purely for this video, I decided to go ahead and refit the keyless works with the other wheels in place. It's not something I would have risked just in case of a slip and the possibility of damaging a wheel had it been uh, somebody else's. But you can see the refit procedure there was the balance stop or the hack, depending on what you would like to call that. I don't know the official Seiko name for it. And then the um, the setting lever, the yoke, and then the setting lever spring. Here I'm reassembling the winding lever for the automatic works. And the sharp-eyed among you may notice that I had actually put those pull levers on the wrong way round, uh, which you will see have magically changed to the correct way round once the bridge goes on because um, I did remove that and rectify it, but didn't actually add that to the filming. But uh, very easy to do with the Seiko is uh, because you're you're rebuilding them upside down effectively. The cover plate that you saw being removed earlier is then refitted after lubricating the pivot points of the gears. And here I'm manually oiling the cap jewels. Ordinarily for these I would use a version 1A auto oiler which is perfect for this job. So the cap jewels are removed, cleaned and then refitted dry. And these are an absolute nightmare to try and oil and then refit. Uh, but there what I'm doing is applying a small amount of 9010 and then when the bridge is refitted the pivots of the wheels will actually carry that lubricant through to the cap jewel. But if you do have a 1A auto oiler they are perfect for capped jewels on Seiko or any other watch that uses a capped jewel system on the train. After refitting the click spring, which you can see me just wiggling out of the way there with my tweezers, the bridge is refitted. And one thing about most Seiko movements is they are so well made that 
this part just tends to drop into place and anybody who's ever rebuilt a movement where the bridge tends to encompass the entirety of the barrel and train knows that it can sometimes be a little bit challenging getting everything aligned it's something you rarely have a problem with with Seiko movements things just tend to drop into place very very nicely indeed and then the bridge is secured by the three screws The barrel arbor is oiled before refitting the ratchet wheel and similarly the pole levers are moved out of the way whilst refitting the ratchet wheel screw just to avoid damaging them. And there I'm using my brass tweezers to hold the ratchet wheel in place while I tighten that. Here I'm refitting the pallet fork followed by the pallet fork bridge and on this particular movement I oil the pallet jewels through the access holes on the dial side of the movement. So once they're replaced and the pallet jewels are oiled, the balance is refitted as you see here. And as it drops into place, you'll see it starts to swing away. This is with just a single wind added to the barrel. I always do this on rebuild just to see that I've got an adequate am uh, amplitude, which shows a nice clean running train and then here I'm adding more wines onto the mainspring barrel to test that we are getting a suitable amplitude. And then onto the dial side and the relevant uh, jewels are oiled on the dial side then the center wheel and the cannon pinion is snapped into place and here we start rebuilding the gear system greasing the pivot points including the fixed gear that you see there which has a little cutaway in the rivet allowing you quite nicely to get a small oiler in there This does seem something of a um, rather convoluted setup for the winding system and the time setting system and uh, while I haven't looked in precise detail as to what each of these do it does seem um, a little unnecessarily excessive to have the additional winding pinion or setting pinion behind the winding pinion followed by this array of gears and this particularly unusual gear that you see here which is a double stacked gear which hopefully you can make out on the video and here we refit the clutch and the winding pinion after greasing them, making sure that the clutch engages with the yoke.
post for the minute wheel is oiled and the minute wheel fitted. The plastic date wheel is dropped into place and the plastic intermediate date wheel, which had popped off during the disassembly, so you didn't see that in the disassembly video, uh, but that's also a plastic wheel. And then the cannon pinion is lubricated and the hour wheel drops into place on top of that. The small plastic star which operates the rapid date change is dropped into the slot. And then the plate with the jumper spring for the calendar wheel is fitted and this locates onto two small brass pins. It's uh, very easy to dislocate as you will see in just a moment as I tease the jumper spring into position. You'll see it, it hops off like so. And you just have to tweak this back into place and fit the jumper springer, uh, the jumper spring rather on the calendar wheel until it holds in place. And then the upper wheel is fitted over it. The brass star that's riveted onto it fits to the winding stem side and engages with the white plastic sliding star gear. This is then resecured using the four equal length screws. Once this is all back in place, I will refit the stem and just test the functions, making sure that the rapid date change works and that it winds forward and clicks over the day accordingly. Now, because I don't have a dial or hands for this, uh, as I say, it was just a movement, a loose movement on its own, I, uh, I can't actually demonstrate that running and showing you the seconds hand running. So at the end of this rebuild video I did include a short clip of the watch on the time grapher um, and also just to demonstrate that you can get really surprising performance from such a nice cheap little movement. There I was just showing how the uh, the hacking system worked. When you pull the stem fully out, the lever will contact the balance and stop it. And at this point here, I'm just refitting the small tension spring, which maintains tension on one of those rocking gears. And as a final part of the assembly, the automatic winding bridge and second reduction wheel is fitted and this is secured in place by two screws. The hand winding feature of this watch will not work unless the automatic bridge and, uh, and, and the reduction wheel is fitted as it winds via the gear on the reduction wheel to the crown wheel. But the inclusion of hand winding is a very, very nice inclusion after many, many years of Seiko's, which did not have that feature. And there you can see the hand winding functioning and that's winding the ratchet wheel. One last thing to do is to fit the oscillating weight and the small dot on the first reduction wheel lines up with the brass pin on the balance cock and then the tip of the oscillating weight also lines up with that pin. Bear in mind if you are a right wrist wearer you want to align this the other way around with the oscillating weight on the opposite side and this will ensure that you get optimum winding performance. And as a final part, here's a short clip of the watch on the time grapher. And 
once that focuses you can see here it's running dial up and the little hiccup there is when I turned it to dial down which you can see there and then look pendant down pendant right as it would be on your wrist pendant up and finally pendant left and you can see it's giving very very good performance and has settled to a nice high 290s 300 degrees amplitude uh, i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one